carcinomas of the external artery canal and the temporal bone are highly uncommon malignant neoplasms. The AJCC Cancer Staging Manual groups them under the broad heading of carcinoma of the skin. The squamous cell, basal cell and the adenoid cystic carcinomas are the commoner varieties whereas the adenocarcinomas grouped under the broad heading of seruminomas are the rarest of the tumors of external artery canal originating from cerumen glands. Consensus regarding management of carcinomas of the external artery canal and temporal bone are not easily found in the literature mainly because of the rarity of these lesions. On block surgical resection of the involved temporal bone is presently the standard of care for management of external artery canal malignancies. But it is no hidden a secret that temporal bone resections continue to be one of the most frighteningly difficult propositions for the head and neck surgeons. Because the operation is so complex and done so infrequently, the dictum of doing the operation the night before on paper is nowhere more important than in temporal bone resections. Hence, highly pertinent to review the surgical anatomy before the procedure. The temporal bone forms part of the middle and posterior fossa of the skull and contributes to the base of the skull and its lateral wall. It chiefly comprises of four parts, the squamous, the mastoid, the tympanic and the petrous part of the temporal bone. The petrous portion or the pyramid contains the sensory organs of the inner ear and its base is united with the mastoid portion. The seventh and the eighth cranial nerves, the facial and the vestibular cochlear nerve enter the petrous portion through the internal artery canal. The facial nerve exits through the stylomastoid foramen of the mastoid. The internal carotid artery traverses the foramen lacerum at its apex. The inferior portion of the petrous pyramid together with the occipital bone forms the jugular foramen. The anterior surface of the petrous portion forms part of the middle cranial fossa and in the middle of this surface is the arcuate eminence caused chiefly by the underlying superior semicircular canal. It's a key landmark and in subtotal temporal bone resections the deepest cut is carried out just medial to the arcuate eminence with transection of the petrous pyramid at this point. The tympanic portion of the temporal bone is the smallest part and forms the anterior, uh, inferior and the posterior wall of the external artery canal. And now the bone cuts first for the lateral temporal bone resection. A radical mastoidectomy is performed, the facial recess is opened, the root of the zygomatic process and now the zygomatic arch is sectioned with a bone cutting saw. The cut passes through the glenoid fossa just lateral to the stylomastoid foramen and the segment of the temporal bone resected, ensuring the facial nerve and the internal carotid artery just out of the harm's way. In case the enterostomy reveals the invasion of mesotympanum, the neurosurgical team joins for the intracranial exposure and a subtotal temporal bone resection is carried out, sectioning the petrous temporal bone just medial to the arcuate eminence. An axial view from the CT scans of our patient revealing a soft tissue mass in the external artery canal infiltrating into the glenoid fossa through the tympanic bone. A lazy S incision has been marked, staying a finger breadth behind the auricle and dropping into the neck. Subplatysmal flaps are raised extensively. A palvas musculoperiosteal flap is being raised for aiding subsequent closure of lateral 
external artery canal. The canal is being transected, adequate free surgical margins have been ensured and now the canal is sutured shut. The pinna along with the flap is reflected anteriorly beyond the parotid. The palva flap is intended to be rotated back on itself later at the time of closure. A supra omohyoid neck dissection is performed. No significant nodes are discovered in this patient. The sternocleidomastoid muscle is detached from the mastoid surface. The internal jugular vein is bared in the neck along with the internal and external carotid arteries. The major vessels are taped for vascular control. A superficial parotidectomy is being performed bearing all the facial nerve branches, carefully preserving them. The parotidectomy specimen along with the neck nodes. The facial nerve branches are retracted with the help of silk slings in preparation for removal of the deep lobe of parotid. The external carotid artery being ligated in continuity to reduce the blood loss during the progress of surgery. The deep lobe of parotid being dissected out. And now the next step is the cortical mastoidectomy. The superior mastoid dissection is carried to the root of the zygoma, taking care not to penetrate the osseous external artery canal or the tegmen. Posterior tympanotomy is done. The mesotympanum found free of disease. Hence the decision taken to limit the procedure to a lateral temporal bone resection, thus obviating the need for an intracranial approach. The vertical segment of the facial nerve is now egg-shelled till the stylomastoid foramen. The dissection proceeds anteriorly into the root of zygoma, uncapping the attic. The posterior tympanotomy is extended inferiorly. The bony facial canal is being demonstrated. The malleus and incus are carefully dislocated and removed. bone cut is transecting the zygomatic arch and now the root of zygoma separated from the squamous temporal medially joining it with the hepatotomy. The mandibular condylotomy being done, the condyle being left in to be removed with the specimen. The branches of the facial nerve are carefully retracted to facilitate the delivery of the specimen from behind the network. A curved chisel is now placed in the extended facial recess and the bony cuts carefully extended anteriorly with a gentle tap and rock motion. At this stage, the jugular bulb, the internal carotid artery and the facial nerve lie just medial to the margins of resection and particular care needs to be taken to avoid injury and thus catastrophic results. Finally, the chisel used to transect the tympanic bone in the glenoid fossa.
the specimen is delivered by dividing any residual soft tissue attachments with electrocautery. Palva's flap is used to reinforce the canal closure. They use taken tube plugged using bone chips to avoid ascending infection from the pharynx and reinforced with a temporal fascia graft. The bone edges are smoothened out with a polishing bar. And the incision closed in single layer with skin staplers around a Romovac train. closure is normal. There's a paresis of the cervical facial branch of the facial nerve owing to unavoidable handling. Two weeks post-op the facial nerve paresis is already passing off. Now this is the follow-up at two years. He's doing well, asymptomatic. There are no signs of recurrence.